Today we're going to be covering the remaining tabs in the drywall count condition properties video. Starting with the additional framing. In this case, we're going to be looking at the additional track that you may need for this drywall count condition. The reason you don't see any additional studs is because we add eight stud options for you on the general tab. So if you need any more studs, feel free to calculate that information there. Here for the additional track, you'll notice that we are asking for the number of runs of track that you need. We're asking for the gauge of metal, the width of metal, as well as the length of metal that you would be working with. For your type, again, this is just making sure that you're filling out the SSMA code, the nomenclature, or whatever that flange is going to be for the specific track piece you're building. Continuing down in the additional framing tab, and now you get into your furring. Here, this would be the number of runs of furring you need per column. This will be the gauge of metal that you're using for the furring, the width and the length of metal you're using for the furring. This would be the thickness of that metal that you're using. And then ultimately, what is the type of furring that you're using as well? Fill all of that out as needed. And once you do, we'll start to calculate that based on your takeoff count. The next tab you have the ability to use is the surfaces tab. Now, in this case, you'll notice that we have surface for board A and you have surface board A2. In most cases, you would only turn board A2 on if you were going to be using a different style of board. If you weren't going to be using fire code, maybe you were going to be using mold resistant or moisture resistant. If you're going to be using dens deck or some type of sheathing, any of those options, that's when you would typically turn board 2 on. In this case, we're saying the total surface height is 10 feet because our column is 10 feet tall. The total surface length is 8 feet because on the beginning of the screen we said we we're doing 8 lineal foot of framing because it's a 2x2 two two column. So that's where we're getting our surface height and our surface length. For the layers, how many layers of board are you applying? In this case we're saying 1. What's the thickness of board that we're going to be using? 5 8 What's the width and length of the board you're going to be working with? And again, this is all bottom information that we're filling out. So this is for the bottoms. You're using a 5 8 4 by 12 board, and that's going to be an FC, so your fire code board. Continue down, and now you get your top board labor. So this is where you're going to start to break out your separate labor lines, hanging bottoms versus hanging tops. In this case, we have our hang tops above 9 feet. And we're saying that in that 9 feet, we're going to be using a 4 by 12 board. If we wanted to, we could change this to a 4 by 8 to make it more practical. Continue down, what's the specific type of board that you're using for that top labor? And are you going to be finishing or fire taping this board? If you're going to be finishing, feel free to type in full finishing or whatever finishing height you may have. If you're only finishing to 9 feet, well in this case we would have 1 foot of fire tape height. If you did need that second board, simply turn it on and start to populate the information based on the product you would be using. In this case, we're going to move on to the next tab, which is your trim tab. With the trim tab, this is going to be what we use to calculate your quarter bead. In this case, you'll notice that we have two different trim options. Trim A is the only one that is currently populated. With trim A, we're calculating four pieces, reason being this is a four-sided column. We have four corners. We need to have four pieces of quarter bead. Our board thickness is inch and a quarter. Our length is at 10 feet. Moving down, we have the material. So what type of material are we using? We're going to be saying galvanized. And what is that going to be used for? It's going to be used for corner bead. Continue down, you have your height. So this is just saying that you're running this 10 feet tall. And then you also have your square foot of mud per lineal foot. This is giving you two square foot of mud per every lineal foot out of this 10 lineal foot you measure. So realistically, for each trim piece, you're going to be getting in total 20 square foot of mud. That's to make sure that you can finish off both sides of that corner bead and have enough mud there to make it look nice and pretty. If you needed to add additional, feel free to change that number. If you needed additional trim, feel free to turn trim B on and calculate the additional trim you would need here. Moving on to the next tab, that's going to be your miscellaneous tab. And the miscellaneous tab is just a catch-all for everything that we haven't grabbed inside of the other tabs. That could be material, it could be labor, it could be equipment, subcontractors, it could be even other tax classifications for items. Ultimately, in the miscellaneous items, you're building a ratio. So make sure that as you add your miscellaneous item in, you set your ratio up to be based on the number of count that you're working with. In this case, the reason why it's count is because we're working with a column. 
If you have any additional questions or you run into any issues as you're setting up a drywall count condition, please feel free to reach out to our tech team and they'd be happy to assist you in any way they can. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.